Assalamu alaikum, this is Yasmin Mujahid and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Alhamdulillah, my voice is fully, pretty much fully recovered. Uh, so I know that we we don't really fully appreciate something until it's taken away from us or at least for a while and alhamdulillah I'm, i am grateful to have my voice back uh it's it's something we take for granted subhanallah uh the 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 topic for today is something which i am uh really it, it's something very very special to me and very important i actually just recently uh, the reason that i was gone last week is i just recently came back from a retreat and uh there were a lot of things that that i kind of uh gained from this ret- retreat walillahi alhamd and one of the, i think the main aha moments kind of epiphanies that i that I got, um, I'm actually going to inshallah share it today um, on the show and inshallah I hope that it benefits uh, other people as well as benefiting um, myself um, inshallah. And that is, uh, basically I have for a long time asked this question and, and this is the question that I titled you know, this, this today's show and that's the question of why am I empty? Uh, basically, um, and this is something personal for me. Uh, I, I personally, for a long time, I struggled with this issue. I struggled with this question, uh, where a person, you know, I always, you know, you were always told that, uh, you know, as believers, as Muslims, you know, if you're, if you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, you shouldn't have to feel sadness or you shouldn't have to feel this emptiness. And, and so I, I had on the one hand this, this sort of this, this, principle this teaching that i had you know grown up with that i know you know that that in the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is is peace and 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 that's where you find that 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 only true happiness and so then on the other hand i could not reconcile why i myself felt f- for a large portion of the time i felt this this sort of this lack this emptiness and so i always you know i always wondered like what is it you know even though i considered myself somebody who uh you know who knows allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and and i i i you know hoped that i was someone who worships allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so then i couldn't understand why am i still empty and why do i have this this still this this almost like this hole that isn't fully f- fully filled inside of me and and subhanallah a lot of people go through this a lot of people go through this on different levels where they feel uh you know in, in every human being i mean i we, we could put it this way in every human being is a whole of some sort and this is a whole which uh because we have been separated from our or, origin you know our originator we have been separated from our home uh we we are not with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the physical sense we're not with god and and so every human being is 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 born with this you know this hole in them and and subhanallah people go throughout their life and they seek different ways to fill this hole and this is where a lot of people spend their life and a lot of people stumble in this quest to fill this hole and people uh use different different things to try to fill this hole some people try to fill the hole with their careers and so they you know they'll throw their whole self their their whole self into their career and and it's in this it's this um there's this attempt to fill this 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 sort of emptiness with their career other people try to fill it uh with other people with with people the people in their lives you know sometimes it's their friends sometimes it's their significant others um sometimes it's you know their family members but they're always trying to get something to fill this hole and and other people um will fill it with other things status sometimes sometimes money sometimes wealth sometimes um, you know, sometimes through, um, you know, even, even some people will go to drugs and alcohol and what ultimately they're, what ultimately is that person trying to do who's getting high or who's, who's, who's drinking? Ultimately, what they're trying to do is fill this hole, is trying to fill this emptiness, this place inside them, uh, that just, it, it, you know, it's, it's, it's there and they don't know what to do about it and they don't know how to fill it. And so the idea is that we all really have the same, desire to fill this this hole in us and and different people fill it in different ways and and so my my issue was you know why is it that even somebody who can say 
um, that they're a Muslim. We, you know, we hope and they're a mu'min, you know, we hope. And someone who, who has made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know, important in their life. Why do they, st- you know, why does this person still feel this emptiness? And this is, this is kind of a question I've been, uh, dealing with for a long time. And I, I think that subhanAllah, you know, I feel like the answer to this question, it has a lot to do with what I realized, uh, you know, at this retreat and after coming back from the retreat. And that is this, uh, a lot of the things that we, normally f- try to fill the hole with or what i personally tried to fill the hole with was usually attachments to people and so everybody has their thing right and and for me personally and this is something that i've written about you know in quite a bit uh, quite a bit and one of the first articles where i really talk about this issue is the article why do people have to leave each other and in this article i describe how for me personally my um my attachments and the, and the way in which I was seeking to fill my inner sort of emptiness was through my, my relationships with people. And so what ended up happening is I would have very, very high expectations of people and when, and people would very easily let, I'd end, I'd be very easily get let down. And that's because I had very high expectations. And I, and it was the reason I had such high expectations is I needed those relationships to fill me. And so what happened is, and part of my own personal development and my own personal realization, um, by the, by the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is He showed me that in my attachments to people, I was, uh, seeking from them something that they cannot give me. I was seeking from somebody uh, something that they don't have to give, and that is t- this fill, because this fill uh, for this hole cannot come from anywhere else other than our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It can't, that, that hole that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in us can only be filled by Him. And so I, I was seeking it in the wrong place. I was trying to depend on things that cannot hold my weight. And, and that was, in my case, it was people. So what ended up happening is, you know, and I think this is part of the process, I started to break a lot of those attachments. And, and when I say attachments, I mean those um, unhealthy attachments, those dependencies on people. I started to break out of that. And alhamdulillah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, there's different means of, of how this happens. And, and I think for me and for a lot of people, it comes in the form of disappointment and sometimes, you know, that that when you expect something from someone, you expect so much from that person, that person will end up letting you down or hurting you. And over time, that sort of eats away at the attachment. And sometimes that's the means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses to free us of, of our attachments to other than Him. So basically, here's the, the part that the, the, the missing ingredient that I wasn't really getting. And that is if you think of the, of the heart as a vessel or a cup, and if it's so full of dunya, it's so full of love of dunya and love of everything in the dunya and all these other attachments and all these other focuses, there's no space in that heart for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what you have to do sometimes, and, and there's different ways of filling the heart with Allah, but one of the ways to fill the heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to first empty it is to first empty it of everything else. And the thing with this way of doing it or this way of it happening is it can be very painful. It can be very, um, in the sense of while the heart is empty, uh, because you're, you're basically breaking away from the other attachments. You're seeing the dunya for what it is. You know, it's no longer something that can fill you. And so if you think of a cup and you're just emptying out that cup, but you're not properly filling it what and what you end up having is an empty cup and so this is kind of like this is the heart so the heart becomes empty and so yes you've broken your attachments and now you don't have these attachments and you don't have you basically lost you, you don't put your hope in dunya anymore but now you you have an empty cup and that's that's a painful thing if that cup is not filled then you're going to be empty and you're going to feel empty and you're going to feel that that lurking feeling that I was, you know, I was trying to understand what causes this. 
And what I didn't understand is I thought I was filling it. I thought I was filling it with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thought I was, because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I pray, you know, I, I worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I, you know, I do da'wah and, and I, I do these things. And so my, my understanding was that I am filling it. But here's what I didn't get. And subhanAllah, I learned this lesson through the story of Musa alayhi salam with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and in this is, this is a story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Taha. Um, and inshallah, I'm gonna go into that, um, when we return, um, after a short break. Assalamu alaikum, this is Yasmin Mujahid and you're listening to Serenity, streaming live on One Legacy Radio. Uh, so we are talking today about this question. It's actually a very personal question for me and um, a big question, which I think a lot of people who, m- maybe some people who do focus and, and pay attention to the condition of you know the inner the inner state basically sometimes they get to a point where they feel like they're empty they feel sort of a, a sense of emptiness or like there's something missing and they're wondering why that is and so what i'm trying what we're doing today is talking about that and and i'm sharing uh you know sort of what my aha moment was about this question and uh and it has to do with actually a story that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us uh in surah taha when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first calls on to Musa alayhi salam and Musa alayhi salam sees the fire uh, in al wadil muqaddasi tawa and he he goes to that valley and he he goes to he follows where he's where the fire is and when he goes there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to him and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to him you know Allah tells him he calls him by his name ya Musa and then he uh, tells him to take off his shoes and subhanallah you know w- when you get into some of the tafas- you know some of the um tafsir about the, you know what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing here with musa it's really deep and really amazing uh but i want to focus on on a different aspect of this conversation actually and that is that when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces himself to musa he says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Innani an Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim as-salata li dhikri. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is introducing himself to Musa alayhi salam and he says indeed I am Allah I am God la ilaha illa ana there is no nothing worthy of worship but me. So right away he introduces he says who he is and then he gives him tawhid he gives him you know that this concept that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His oneness. And then he says, فَعْبُدْنِي So therefore, so he because of this tawheed, because of this, uh, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship, therefore, worship me. فَعْبُدْنِي So, so fulfill عُبُدَيَّ to me. And then, وَأَقِيمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِي And then, right after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and establish salah, establish prayer for my remembrance, for my dhikr. So subhanAllah, in this first commandment, this first statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, I mean, this is, this has got to be important because it's, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Musa, he's introducing himself here. And so whatever he says first at this point is obviously extremely important. And here what Allah says first is there's nothing worthy of worship but him. And so therefore we need to establish, establish to, pr- to worship him and then establish prayer for his remembrance. So the point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pointing to here is dhikr, is remembrance, is salah, is the fact that we need to be not just praying. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't just say that we need to pray or we need to remember him, but that we need to establish the prayer. And so this is something much deeper than just praying. I mean, it's like roots, right? You, when you, when you do something and it's constant and it's, it's in, it's established within your self, within your society, within your community, and even, you know, on a, on a larger scale. And, and so here, 
the point that I really, what I really want to point to here is the fact that he's telling him of how he's supposed to uh, be involved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's remembrance. Okay, so that's basically kind of at the very beginning of this conversation that Allah has um, subhanahu wa ta'ala with Musa alayhi salam. And then many, many ayat later, so this is ayah 14 of Surah Taha. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks with Musa and Musa alayhi and he tells him to throw his staff, which is also extremely deep. And and then he tells him, um, and then Musa alayhi salam asks for his brother to join in with him, Harun. And so there's this, this long conversation happening. And then at the end of, basically at the end of this conversation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Musa alayhi salam a mission. Well, first he, you know, he gave him the mission to go to Fir'aun. And then he asks for the help with, with Harun uh, of his brother. And then after he agrees to allow Harun to go with him, alayhi salam, now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is towards the very end of the conversation, he sends him away to go with, to Fir'aun. And here's what he says to Musa alayhi salam. He says, اذهب اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم اذهب انت واخوك بآياتي ولا تنيا في ذكري. So in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Go you and your brother with my signs. Wala tania fi dhikri. So in this last part of the ayah is basically the answer to my question. <laughs> and that is Musa alayhi salam is told he has this mission, right? He has to go to Fir'aun. This is a big mission. And he's te- Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him the prescription of what he must do. He doesn't just tell him, remember me. He doesn't just tell him, remember me. He said, وَلَا تَنِيَا فِي ذِكْرِي Which means, do not slacken. Do not become weak in it. Do not slacken even in my remembrance. Allahu Akbar. So subhanAllah, like that, that, I mean, it's something so profound and yet so simple that when we talked at the beginning about the cup, right? We talked about emptying the cup. If that cup in you really, really break your attachments, okay? And, and this is, and you have seen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is it, right? In terms of attachments, in terms of the more you get closer to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more that that's going to empty of any other false attachment. But now imagine you have an empty cup and you're only filling it a third or a half or an eight, you know, or, or three fours. What's going to happen is there's still that empty spot. There's still that emptiness. And the reason for that is we slacken in his remembrance. And that's the reason because we, we may say we are, well, we're praying, right? I mean, alhamdulillah, if we're praying five times a day, we're good, right? We're at least we're praying or we might. You know, we're, the fact that we're, even, even the fact that we're, we might be doing Islamic work, right? We're doing work for the sake of Allah. So we think that, that that's sufficient. We think that's sufficient for his dhikr. We think that's sufficient for his remembrance. And what's so interesting here is it, is that you realize experientially it isn't. That, it, it, that that heart is so need, it so needs the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if you notice in the Quran, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about dhikr, it's with a modifier and that's kathiran. It's always, the two are always together. That when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about remembering him, along with it is always a lot, kathiran, a lot, abundantly, not just remembering him. So the idea here is that, and what I I think I did not fully understand, is it's not just enough to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It needs to be a lot. <laughs> and the more that that is lacking, the more you're going to feel that emptiness. And the more that there isn't, and the more that that is, um, basically the more that you do remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't slacken in that remembrance, then you're going to be, you know, like that's basically, I think, what, what, what I realized in, from the, the advice that was given to Musa alayhi salam is that's really the only way you're going to be okay. Especially if you really, if you really see this dunya for what it is and you really want to purify the heart of all other attachments, you, you need to, you need to fill it a lot. You need to fill it because the heart, subhanAllah, like, you know, it, it, it needs, it needs that, that remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same way that we need air. And so it's like, it's, I guess, I mean, for me, what, <laughs> what I realized is that, you know, I'm, it's kind of like a person who's just taking a couple breaths, you know, and they're like skipping, 
I don't know, maybe, maybe they're like taking a breath and then they're skipping like 20 and then they're taking another one and then skipping. And then they're kind of wondering like, why am I, why am I feeling suffocated? You know, that's, that's really the, 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 the condition that, that, that I'm speaking about is that you're, you're wondering why you're being suff, you're feeling suffocated because you're not taking enough breaths. And, and that really is what dhikr is, is it's air, it's breaths. And when I say dhikr, you know, I mean remember, when I say remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's, there's a lot of different forms of remembrance of Allah, but you know, the idea here is that whenever we feel, if we're in a situation where we're like, you know, we're pretty good, you know, we're praying, we're doing this, we're doing that, and then we're just, but we're wondering, like, there's still something wrong, there's still something missing, and we don't understand what it is, and, and really what it is is that, yeah, you're breathing, but you're just not breathing enough, you know, and that's the reason why you're feeling that suffocation. And subhanAllah, it just, it needs to be a lot. And remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you know, the first and foremost, the best way to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through the, those ways which He has made an obligation. And that first and foremost is the salah, the five daily prayers. So of course that's, you know, that's where you, you always begin with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, uh, you know, has made obligatory. And then on top of that, there's other ways to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, um, you know, through the Quran, these are the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we're going, you know, days without reading Quran, and then we wonder why, why do I, why do I have this, you know, this, this strange emptiness inside me? Well, the answer is that you, you went days without taking proper breaths. You know, you were not feeding your, you were not giving yourself that, that proper amount of air. And that's why you were feeling that, that emptiness. You know, so staying connected to the Quran, it's absolutely necessary. Um, if you want to be okay, you know, again, we're talking now not about haram and halal. You know, right now we're talking about, you know, like how, how is it that I'm going to be okay? How is it that I'm going to be complete? I'm going to be able to feel, um, full. I'm going to be able to feel like n- not have this empty place in me or some, again, it's, it, it's some proportion, you know, sometimes, it's it's partly filled. We have some dhikr in our life, and sometimes, but but we just may not have enough. And and so again, this isn't this isn't to say that you know it's it, it, these are not like uh, it's haram to to not you know read Quran every day. That's not what we're saying. We're talking right now about um, how it is that you're going to fill that place. Um, and the more that you the more dhikr that you have, the more that you remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And and also even even when you're when you're not, um, you know, even if you're walking or you're driving or remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't have to only be, um, while you're praying or when you're at home alone, but you can be remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, your, with the tongue, with the heart, you know, all the time. If, if, you know, even if you're not, um, you know, even while you're, you're going to class or you're walking or you're driving. But this is really what we have to think about it is food. We have to think about it as air. You know, if we're, if we're having trouble and we're wondering why am I feeling like I'm not getting enough food. I'm not, you know, I'm feeling hungry all the time. Um, we're going to say, okay, maybe I'm not eating enough. Maybe I need to increase my calorie, you know, intake. And it's the same thing with the heart. You know, the heart feels hungry and it's like, you know, it's like there's something like it, it can, it keeps. And when you find yourself like sort of, um, you know, like latching on to things really desperately and trying to get those things to fill you, you know, and, and you're just, you go from one attachment to another, right? You're, you're attached to this person and then you're like really, really obsessed with that person and you, and you need that person to fill you and then, and then that doesn't work and then you go to the next person or then you go to this, you know, your career or, or whatever it is and you find yourself sort of really needing these things very, very desperately. That is a sign that we're not filling our hearts properly. We're not filling that hole and that emptiness with the right thing and that's why we're we're feeling that starvation in a sense so um what i want to do now is take a short break and i'm 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 going to ask you to write your comments and your questions in the chat box inshallah
Assalamu alaikum, this is Yasmin Mujahid and you're listening to Serenity streaming live on One Legacy Radio. So we have a lot of questions coming in on the chat box, alhamdulillah. Uh, and a lot of them are actually asking uh, similar questions. Uh, so I, I'm going to address, inshallah, those questions uh, to the best I can, inshallah. Uh, and one of the questions that a lot of people are asking is, uh, how do I, like for example, um, I'm feeling my iman is weakening day by day. Uh, what can I do to prevent it? And another question, um, how do I... Uh, keep from slacking in the in the thicket, and how do I keep that up? So, to the first question about iman weakening day by day, how do we prevent it? Well, the 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 reason why iman weakens, and and one thing we need to know about iman is it is something that is um it goes up and down, and this is this is natural that it's never going to stay stay completely constant. There's nothing completely constant um, except for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything else changes. Um, you know, nothing, no state is stable and, and, and unchanging. But w- we want that our iman be going in the upward direction, inshallah. Yes, we are going to have dips, but what we have to do if we feel like our iman is going down, it's usually a consequence of slackening in dhikr. Exactly. That's the reason. And so what you'll have to look at is where exactly in your routine are you slacking in dhikr? So remember, this was the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Musa alayhi salam. So we know that it's good advice. We know that there's very deep meaning in it. When he says, وَلَا تَنِيَ فِي ذِكْرِ He's telling him and warning him not to slacken even. Not just don't remember me. Don't even slacken in it. Because he won't be okay. He has, you know, he knows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that Musa alayhi salam is, has this job, right? Has this mission. We all have a job and, and, and we are not going to be okay unless we refrain from slacking in dhikr. So we have to look at in our life, where are we slacking in dhikr? First place you need to look is in your salah. Absolute first place is in your salah. The five daily, um, obligatory prayers. And someone else made this point and it's a very good point that it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala noticed that when Allah gave us the commandment for salah, he gave us the commandment to pray throughout the day. We are not, when we were told to pray five times a day, it was at specified times. And those specified times are not all right before we sleep or right when we wake up, but rather all throughout the day. What's the purpose of that? Well, one of the reasons is that that makes us continuously be remembering Allah throughout the day. That we never have a period of time that's too long where we are not remembering Allah. Because it's kind of like, you know, you don't take like, you know, 500 breaths really, really quick and then go, you know, three minutes with no breaths because then you wouldn't get enough oxygen, right? And so the idea here is that the, 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 the air needs to be equally divided throughout the day. The breaths, right? When we're breathing, we need to have a, a steady, amount of air coming into our lungs in order to live. We can't all just take them all at one time and then go uh, a while without it. Otherwise, we suffocate and die, right? And that's the same thing that happens to the heart, exactly. That it has to be continuous and it has to be all the time spaced out, constant, in order for the heart to stay alive. Uh, so so I would say that if you feel your iman going down, you need to look at where is your dhikr slacking. Um, and that's the reason, because that's the reason that, that your iman is going down. That's the reason for your problem. So if, if it's, if you look at your salah and your salah is in order, you're praying, uh, you're praying and, um, and you're praying on time. And that's extremely important that it has to be on time as well. The five daily prayers. Uh, if, if that isn't happening, then you know right away where your problem starts. That's, that's where you have to start to solve the problem. If you have that, then you look at, okay, well, where else am I maybe slacking in my, in my, um, dhikr? Perhaps maybe you're not reading Quran, um, regularly, or perhaps you're not, uh, you know, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Throughout the day and other times, either through the, you know, adhkar. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in, in the example of His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you know, if you pick up a dua book, like, like Fortress of a Muslim, Hissan Muslim, or, 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 um, Ma'thurat, or any of these compilations, you'll find there's a dua for almost every movement that you make. There's a reason for that, right? I mean, this isn't just for no reason. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was remembering Allah at every moment. I mean, really, it, it 
coming down to like everything. I mean, even intimacy, even eating, even drinking, even walking out of the house, coming into the house, wearing new clothes, um, you know, getting into your car, starting to drive. Uh, everything, every moment, every motion, uh, when you're, every, even motions of the, of the heart, even, even movements of, of, of the inner state, like when you're afraid or when you're sad or when you're, you know, you're pleased or when you're not sure and you pray istikhar. I mean, there's always a dua for everything. I mean, we have to reflect about this. The reason for this is because this is really how we're supposed to be living. Uh, and, and this is, it's like, it's kind of like you, you, you know, you buy a brand new car and you, and you just like really, really want to take care of it, right? You, you could be one of those people like, like myself <laughs> who doesn't really like pay attention to when you're supposed to do an oil change and all that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> or you could, you can do that or, or when you're supposed, okay, one time I was driving and I'm on the highway and all of a sudden the car just like, it won't, the acceleration, it won't accelerate anymore. And it just like, it, it's decelerating, if that's allowed to say, um, if that's a word. I think my physics teacher didn't let us use that word. Um, but basically, it was just like stopping. I mean, it wouldn't, it wouldn't accelerate anymore. And what ended up happening, the reason this happened to my car is because of the timing belt broke. And apparently you're supposed to change the timing belt at a certain number of miles. And I didn't know this. So the timing belt broke and it destroyed the engine. So the idea here is that there is a certain way to take care of the car if you want it to run properly and you have to keep up with it, right? Or you can be one of those people who slackens in taking care of the car, but then there's consequences. I mean, that's the point. And again, sometimes these things might be optional, but at the same time, if you want to take care of that car and you don't want the car to break down, you need to be doing that. And the more that you're up with the maintenance of that car, the more you take care of that car, the better it's going to run and the less likely it is to break down when you really need it, right? So this is the same thing with our, with our inner state, with our hearts is that, you know, if you really, I mean, we have these du'as, we have these supplications, supplications for the morning, for the evening, for after salah, for like every motion that you do when you, you know, when you get married, when you, you know, everything. And so if you really want your heart and your soul to be in like top condition working, you need to use these things. You need to do these things. You need to have, use these adhkar. They're there for a reason. Uh, so, um, the other question that the person was asking is how do we keep from slacking in it? And I, it, it really has to do with first realizing the necessity for it. I think that I personally can speak for myself in saying, I don't think I fully understood the necessity, not just for dhikr, but in an incredible amount of dhikr, an incredible amount. It's not just dhikr, but it's quantity and quality of dhikr, extremely important it needs to not only be, um, you know, a lot, but it also, the quality is, is also necessary. That when you are making, you are remembering Allah, you could be like, subhanAllah, 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 but you're not, um, your, your heart isn't present. You're not, you're not even realizing what you're saying. So it's, it's very important that we understand that dhikr is ultimately, I mean, yes, it's an action of the tongue, but ultimately it's an action of the heart. That the heart needs to be present for it to really work properly, you know, for it to, for it to be, and yeah, we get inshallah rewarded, but the idea here is that dhikr is supposed to be a movement of the heart, um, and, and so the heart needs to be present. So the way to, to keep from, um, you know, from, from slacking is there, ha- you know, is it's important to have a routine and to have and to incorporate dhikr as much as possible. And I think if there's any, obviously, if any take home message, uh, for, for me and for you, uh, it's, it's that just realizing how much it needs to be. And that, you know, sometimes we just think, oh, we're all right because we pray, you know, we pray. And so, but again, it's like, it's kind of like that person. Well, I, I mean, that's how, kind of how I take care of cars. I'm sorry, but, um, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's, as long as I'm, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know when I did the, the oil change last, but you know, the idea is, you know, it's like, oh, it's, at least I'm filling it with gas, right? <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, it's gonna, it, it's kind of like that, right? You think as long as, you know, you're filling it with gas, at least the car will be okay. Yeah. Maybe the car will keep running, but you're messing up that car. Like you're not taking care of it. And, and eventually it does break down and that's what happens. And so, you know, we can't take care of 
Just don't take care of your heart like I take care of cars. That's that's the take home message. Um, you know, just inshallah, like we we want that our hearts, you know, and, and subhanAllah, Allah from his mercy, he puts these like indicators, you know, like the fact that we feel the pain, the fact that we feel that emptiness, that's actually a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you think about the manufacturer of the car, why did that manufacturer put, you know, like a like a little indicator a indicator light when you need an oil change? Well, for people like me, right? For people who don't keep track of it. Okay, I've I've gone this many miles. And so there's indicators so that you'll take care of that car. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his indicators and Allah is is high above any analogy. Um but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala part of his indicators is this pain that we feel, this 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 lack, this emptiness that we feel is an indicator that okay, there's something that we're not doing enough of perhaps um you know, we're not taking enough breaths, you know, we're not eating enough food and we need to increase it inshallah. So um <clears throat> I'm going to ask you ask you guys again if you want to ask more questions, I'm going to take one more break and inshallah return with um looking at the chat box. Assalamu alaikum, this is Yasmeen Mujahid and you're listening to Serenity streaming live on One Legacy Radio. And we are talking today about the importance and the necessity of dhikr and not just that we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is, you know, kind of the way I used to think and not really, um, under, I never, I don't think I understood before the importance of and the um, the emphasis on the amount of dhikr that is necessary for us to be all right, uh, you know, and and the quality of the dhikr as well. Uh, and so, just to address a couple more of the questions before we close um, from the chat box, one of them uh, asks for a clarification of the of the meaning of attachments, and um, and I think that. I think that I have to like coin a new word than attachments because a lot of times uh, the word attachments is used in a we we've come to see it as like a positive thing, right? You have attachments and that means love, and we equate attachment with love, and and that's not the way that that I'm using the word. Um, but ba- basically, here we're not talking about any kind of relationship that you have or any kind of love that you have for something. But when I'm talking here, when I say attachments, it's kind of like attachment capital A uh, is like a dependency that you have on something or someone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you should only have on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so it's, it's this, it's this need. It's this ultimate dependency. It's basically the focus of your life and of your heart, uh, which should only be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so what happens is that we, we focus our hearts on things, uh, of the dunya rather than focusing our hearts on Allah. And that causes a lot of problems. It causes a lot of, uh, a lot of pain actually in our life and a, and a lot of problems. And that's because the heart was, was created to focus only on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's the, um, the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and he created the heart with that purpose. And so when we use the heart for a purpose other than what it was created for, it doesn't work well. And, and it breaks and it, and it causes a lot of problems. So, uh, the question somebody had asked is one of the reasons why, and this is a very good point, um, very good question. One of the reasons why people slacken, um, in their dhikr, in their remembrance is because they are too quote unquote busy. Um, so the reason that we don't have as much time or we don't believe that we have as much time to remember Allah or to, or, you know, as much as we, we could is because we see, oh, well, we have all these other responsibilities. We have all these other things that we're busy with. And it's interesting, uh, because when you, and this is actually to, to, to address this question, I want to, I want to bring up a, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, because I think it really addresses this issue really beautifully. And that is when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, that whoever, he explained that whoever makes their primary concern, makes the dunya their primary concern, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, their, their matters become scattered. And, and poverty is put between their eyes. So this person who actually makes 
whatever they're doing in dunya as their primary concern. I got to do this. I got to go to my job. Then I got to pay this bill. And, I, and and their whole focus, and this is now I'm talking about focus. I'm not talking about what we're doing. Obviously, we got to go to work. We got to do these things. We got to pay bills. I'm just talking about where the heart is focused. When the heart is focused on these things, what actually happens is those very things of dunya start to become scattered. Things become more difficult for us and more difficult to deal with, and more heavy, and they become heavy on our heart. And poverty is put between the eyes, subhanAllah. When you have poverty, when you, you know, when, when, Allah, when the Prophet Sallallahu says poverty is put between the eyes, a person who has poverty between their eyes is always going to see it, is always going to feel in, like, like when you feel like, You're always seeing poverty. You always feel like you don't have enough. You always feel like there's something missing. You always feel like, uh, you know, you're running, but you're not getting anywhere. And this is a consequence of actually making these dunya preoccupations your focus. And on the other hand, the hadith says that the one who makes akhirah beyond this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The hereafter, his primary focus Jama Allahu Amra, that Allah will, will join his affairs and will put contentment in his heart. And, and subhanAllah, this is the amazing thing about dunya. And the dunya will come to him, even, yeah, and even hating to come to him, the dunya will come to him. And this is the thing about dunya that we have to, you know, understand at some point is the more you run after dunya, the more it runs away from you. And the, when you turn your back on dunya, that's when it runs after you. So subhanAllah, when you, if you were to make your dhikr, your primary concern, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help you with those other things that you have to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will actually take care of those other things, your job and your family and your other responsibilities, all of a sudden start to become easier. And this is what the Prophet Sallallahu is talking about when he says, Jama Allahu Amra, that his matters will become joined and you'll no longer feel that sense of you know being scattered because this is the thing you know when we feel really really busy and we just feel scattered we feel like all over the place we feel like you know you know when you feel you're pulled in you know this is like an expression we use that we're pulled in a million directions right and this is what happens when we're focusing too much on the task the dunya task itself is that we feel that way and we're not really able to be fully effective in all the things we need to do but subhanAllah, if we shift our focus onto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead and onto the dhikr itself and onto really just focusing the heart on Him, those other things actually become easier and those other things get taken care of. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us to focus our hearts on the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow the advice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Musa alayhi salam, وَلَا تَنِيَ فِي ذِكْرِ وَقُولِ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهُ لِي وَلَكُمْ إِنَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُ بِحَمْدَكَ نَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنْتَ نَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَنَتُوبُ إِلَيْكَ وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَةُ اللَّهِ وَبَرَكَاتُهُ